Mother, are post 40% bran flakes really the best tasting cereal of them all? Well, your father says so, and father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as Father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by America's largest-selling brand flakes, Post 40% brand flakes, and by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely (laughs) caffeine-free. Towns and cities like people have birthdays. And Springfield is no exception. In fact, Springfield celebrates its natal day each year with the annual Founders' Day Carnival, a fairly gaudy and joyous affair held in the municipal auditorium. The town shops and schools are closed, and its citizens are urged to join together in the day-long celebration. Grouped around the breakfast table in the white frame house on Maple Street, in a holiday mood, the members of the Anderson family are discussing the event. Like this. Gee, Mommy... It starts at 12. We better hurry. Now, don't get so excited, Kathy. Heavens no, the carnival runs all afternoon and all evening, till midnight. How much spending money can I have this year? No, I don't know. You'll have to take that up with your father when he comes down for breakfast. I hope he's in a good mood. I remember last year he didn't much want to go to the carnival. Well, don't urge him. Don't even bring it up. Let him think it's his idea to go, and then he'll like it. Well, good morning. Good morning, Father. Sit down, dear. I'll have a waffle for you in just a second. Fine. <sighs> What's the matter with you kids this morning? You all look so glum. Don't you know this is a holiday? Oh, is it really? Say, that's right. It is, isn't it? Yeah, we've hardly been discussing it all morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, I was lying upstairs in bed thinking about it. Oh, you were? Yes. I said to myself, a man needs a day like this occasionally. A day when he can come down to the breakfast table late in his robe and slippers. So? Go on, Dad. So I decided the only thing to do on a day like this is to put on some old clothes, loll around the house, kick around the yard all day. Loll around the house? Kick around the yard? All day? (laughs) Yes, anything wrong with that? Daddy, aren't we going to the Founders' Day Carnival? Oh, 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 kitten. You surely don't want to go to that annual hassle. Sure. We all do. Well, there's no sense in going to that carnival. It's the same thing every year. Same concessions, same acts. They got all new acts this year. Almost. Well, it wouldn't be so bad if we had a good time there, but we never do. I had a good time. Oh, sure. You had a great time. Got sick from eating all that junk? I'm in better shape this year. (laughs) Bud lost his wallet with all his money in it. Betty saw her boyfriend with some other girl and wanted to throw herself in the lake. (laughs) Oh, yeah. We had a wonderful time. (laughs) Are you through now, Father? I guess so. Why? Well, I have to go to the carnival. I've got to meet Ralph there. Oh? Can't Ralph take you? No, he has to get down there early. He's working in one of the booths where they throw baseballs at a dummy. I see. Well, if Ralph keeps ducking, I don't think he'll get hurt very badly. (laughs) They don't throw the baseballs at Ralph. (laughs) I know it, Princess. I was just joking. Some joke. You mean we are going after all, Daddy? Well, now, I don't want to be an old wet blanket or a spoil sport, but uh, look at it this way. Here we go. Now, we have a wonderful free day. No work, no school, a wonderful chance to spend a day together. So why should we spoil it by spending it in a dusty, smoke-filled auditorium, being jostled around by a mob of people we hardly know, trying to get a little enjoyment out of dull entertainment and poisonous food? You make it sound very intriguing, dear. Well, it's the truth. We have a wonderful home here. What better place could we spend a holiday in? Want us to name a few? (laughs) We have a nice secluded yard, a a croquet set. Some mallets are broken and there's just one ball left. Well, it might be better to just rest. Oh, great. Get acquainted with each other. Families don't spend enough time together. Then there's books. Now, this is a good day to catch up on your reading. Books are your best friends. Oh, sure. 
Bud, you haven't finished your breakfast. Where are you going? I'm going to go out and play football with a bunch of books. <laughs> Kathy, how about you? Do you want another waffle? No, Mommy. I'm not hungry anymore. May I be excused? I guess so. I'm not hungry either. I'm going to my room. But, Betty, you've hardly eaten a thing. Not enough to keep you alive. You call this living? <laughs> Well, James, you certainly got the children in a fine holiday mood. Well, I know they feel disappointed right now, but staying home on a day like this is the only sensible, logical thing to do. Oh, I agree with you completely. It is the only sensible thing. But somehow or other, logic doesn't always make children happy. Would you hand me that other section of the paper? Uh-huh. It is kind of fun to get out of the house once in a while. What'd you say, Margaret? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Did you see this piece in here about our neighbor? Who do you mean? Old Fred Culver. It says he's just returned from his annual motor trip. Leave it to old Blabbermouth to get it in the papers. It says here it was an extremely interesting trip highlighted by a visit to Mitchell, South Dakota to see the famous Corn Palace. Corn Palace? What's that? I'm not sure, but I think it's a big auditorium built out of corn cobs. <laughs> well, that sounds interesting. Well, it won't be by the time Fred gets to telling about it. All he'll get out of it is the exact number of kernels they use. And then compare that with his gas mileage between there and Dubuque, Iowa. I tell you, Margaret, there is the biggest bore that ever hit Springfield. Oh, really? I remember last year, he cornered me at the drugstore. I had to stand there for two hours. Two hours! While well, he told me the exact gas mileage he got between every single town on his trip. Oh, yes, and how a gas station man in Wompton Springs, Minnesota, tried to jip him out of two gallons of gas. I'll never forget it. Now, how'd the man try to do it? Oh, I've forgotten. Say, um, uh, <laughs> where's that book I borrowed from Ed Davis a while back? This would be a good day to read that. What book? Oh, you About know. four or five years ago, you lugged home War and Peace. Yeah, that's the one. Good heavens, haven't you returned that yet? Well, I haven't read it yet. <laughs> I think I'll go in the den and tackle it so I can get it back to Ed so he can read it. Well, you ought to be able to whip that off in a couple of hours. It's only 1,400 pages. <laughs> yes, sir, this is the life. Let's see now. Oh, here we are. War and Peace. Hmm, that's a heavy book. Oh, here's something lighter. How to Tell Your Friends from Apes. <laughs> now to stretch out here on the old Davenport. Yes, sir, this is the life. Ah, boy. Father. Uh-oh. Father, are you in the den? Yes, princess, and I'm reading... Well, I'll try not to disturb you, but I just have to use the phone. The least I can do is let Ralph know I won't be there. You're right ahead. Just don't hang on the phone all day. Oh, of course not, Father. I wouldn't want to do anything to ruin this gay holiday. Uh-huh. Hello, Ralph. And this is Betty. No, I won't be there early, late, or any other time. I hate to say why. Go on, tell him why. Yes, that's right. Well, no, it's not that, Ralph. He's really not cheap. <laughs> I'm getting fonder of that Ralph every day. <laughs> well, anyway, I can't go because we're going to spend a perfectly, utterly chummy day here in our charming, exciting home. Well stated. Well, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, Ralph, goodbye. Are you enjoying your book? I haven't even found out what it's about yet. <laughs> well, have fun. Thank you. <sighs> now then. Dad. Uh-oh. Dad, uh, will I disturb you if I use the phone? Well, how important is it? Awful important. Joe Phillips is expecting to see me at the carnival, and I've got to tell him I won't be there. Won't he be able to figure that out if he doesn't see you there? <laughs> Not Joe. He's no good at figuring. <laughs> Hmm. I'm beginning to think somebody else is, though. Uh, this won't take a second, Dad. Mm -hmm. Hello, that you, Joe? Bud. Oh, pretty good. 
considering. Say, Joe, uh, I won't be able to meet you at the Founders Carnival today. Well, no, it's not the money. Exactly. <laughs> Who said anything about money? Well, Joe, if people are going to talk about us, they'll just have to go ahead and do it. Hmm. No, we're just going to stay home and play something exciting, like authors. Well, I'll be seeing you, Joe. So long. Enjoying your book, Dad? Oh, yes, fine. I've read the first half page over about six times now. <laughs> and I couldn't tell you a word that's on it. Maybe you ought to try reading something easier. Maybe. Ta-ta. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay, try again. Page one. Daddy! Uh-oh. <laughs> I thought this was a plot of some kind. Daddy! Yes, kitten, come right in. Did you wish to use the phone? Why, uh, yes. How did you know? Oh, I don't know. It just seemed like it was about your turn. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, nothing. Whom uh, do you have to call? I have to call, uh... Let's see now. I can't remember. I figured it was real important. Oh, I remember. Patty Davis. Will I disturb you if I call her? Oh, no, not at all. I want to read this first half page over four or five more times anyway. <laughs> so fascinating. Hello, Patty. This is Kathy. Yeah. Patty, if I was going to meet you at the carnival, I can't do it. It's not so much the money, but my daddy's real cheap. <laughs> oh, sure. Cheapest man in the world. Well, I'll explain it to you later, Patty. Old tightwad Tom, they call him. <laughs> you wouldn't understand now, Patty. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Did you think up all those things to say all by yourself, Kathy? I think so. Are you enjoying your book, Daddy? Oh, yes, fine. Most interesting book I've ever read. Well, I'll see you later, Daddy. I'll look forward to it. <laughs> that was a great performance. Well, let's see now. Page one. Say, Jim. Oh, no, Mark. <laughs> Surely you don't want to use the phone, too. Use the phone? What for? Oh, I just thought maybe you were in on the big plot the kids have going. A plot? Yeah, <laughs> First, they're going to disturb me so much, I'll give up the book. Then they're going to shame me into taking them to the carnival by indicating I'm too chintzy to take them. <laughs> that isn't the reason, is it? <laughs> Certainly not. Well, I bring gayer tidings. I just went out to the mailbox There's no mail deliveries today. I know, but in the mad excitement of the holiday, I forgot that. Anyway, I went out there, and guess who I ran into? Our dear neighbor, Fred Culver. Oh, golly, did you get stuck? No, I didn't. But it seems he found out you were going to loll around home all day, so he said, that's great. I'll just drop over and spend the whole afternoon telling old Jim about our fascinating trip to the Corn Palace. You, you mean he's coming over here? Yes. And Jim, he's going to bring along some of the most unbelievable mileage figures you've ever seen. Trapped. <laughs> right in my own home. Poor father, that's the trouble with planning a quiet day at home. You can never be sure how it will end up. However, here are a few things you can be sure of. When it comes to breakfast, chances are you've been hearing about bran, and it's important to keep regular benefits for years. And maybe you've actually tried it. Only you weren't fully satisfied with the flavor. If that's the case, I have some good news. Yes, the fact is, something pretty wonderful has happened to bran. That's right. The Post people have created a wonderful new flavor for their Post 40% bran flakes. They call it magic oven flavor. And after trying it, I've had friends tell me they like new Post bran flakes better than any other cereal. And that's important because now your ounce of prevention, Post bran flakes, 
gives you the important keep regular benefits of bran in a cereal you'll really enjoy day after day. Now, Mother, I hope all this helps you solve the problem of what cereal to serve your family. Yes, yeah, start serving them new post bran flakes. Eat them for flavor. Eat them for health. You'll win both ways. So, when you do your marketing this weekend, remember... For goodness sake, eat post brand flakes. So good and so good for you. Yes, ask your grocer for America's largest selling brand flakes. Post 40% brand flakes. So good and so good for you. <laughs> Well, it's going to be an interesting afternoon at the White Frame House on Maple Street. Fred Culver, the longest-winded talker in the neighborhood, has discovered that Jim is spending a holiday at home and is on his way over. Let's see how Jim handles this little problem. Margaret, why did you have to tell Fred I was going to be home? Oh, what else could I tell him, dear? You made it very plain to all of us that you weren't going to step out of the house. You see, Father, if you'd gone to the carnival like the sensible people in town... Princess, simply because I refused to wade in hot dogs and strawberry pop... That's the life. What is? <laughs> Waiting in hot dogs and strawberry pop? <laughs> don't you want to talk to Mr. Culver, Daddy? Uh, run outside, kitten. I don't know what you can do, dear. Well, I know I'm not going to let that champion boar corner me like this without a fight. I'll handle old Fred some way. How? I don't know yet. Maybe I'll just let him tell his story. I won't say a word. Let him bore himself to death for once. <laughs> well, that must be him now. Go let him in, bud. And send him into the den. Yeah, get him here right away. I can hardly wait. Okay. Come on, girls. You come out to the kitchen with me. The men will want to be alone while they discuss the corn palace. Don't rub it in. Come on, girls. Okay. What can we do, Mommy? Oh, I've got a few ideas that might work. He's right there in the den, Mr. Culver. Fine, bud, fine. Nice little home you have here. We spend all our holidays in it. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, here's Mr. Culver. Oh, uh, hello, Fred. Hi there, Jim, old boy. Bud, come out in the kitchen. I'm coming. So you're just taking your kind of easy today, huh, Jim? That was my original plan. Well, sir, I don't blame you. No place like home, I always say. Uh-huh. You take this trip we made. It was real interesting all the way down the line, but even so, there were times when I wish I was home. Ever feel like that? I do right now. <laughs> yes, sir. Sure a lucky thing I happened to catch you in today. Oh, yeah, things have really been breaking for me lately. You know, Jim, I wish you could have been along on this trip. Absolutely one of the most interesting trips I've ever made. Why, you just wouldn't believe the gas mileage I got. Oh, yes, I would. <laughs> Guess what I average, for the whole trip, that is. Oh, I don't know. Oh, go on, make a guess. Well, uh, about... No, uh... no, you're off. <laughs> 22 and three-fourths miles per, would you believe that? Yes. 22 and three-fourths. Yeah, I got that. 22 and three-fourths, Jim. Say, that was an interesting trip, wasn't it? Say that again. Now, let's see. Uh, you want to start off with the out-of-state licenses we counted or the names of the motels we stopped in? I don't know. They both sound so fascinating, it's hard to decide. Well, I'll tell you. I'll show you the snapshots first. I got some real dandies this year. I'll bet. Yes, sir, we went clean up to Mitchell, South Dakota, you know, and Jim, we saw the Corn Palace. Uh-huh. Was that interesting? Was it? You wouldn't believe this, Jim, but I counted 19 out-of-state licenses parked right there. No. 19. Oh, that can't be. I'll prove it to you. <laughs> I got it written down here someplace. Now... Where is that? Uh, never mind, Fred, never mind. I believe you. Well, we come to that later on anyway. Now, then, here's a picture of some rocks outside of Pipestone, Minnesota. Really? Yeah. 
Doesn't look like much in black and white. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but you should have seen it in color. Incidentally, it was right near here that we stopped at a very interesting farmhouse to get some water to take my vitamin pills. <laughs> and they had the biggest hog there that you've ever seen. <laughs> a prize-winning boar. They give prizes for that now? <laughs> Sure, sure. I got a picture of it here someplace. Where did I paste that? I know it's in here. Well, never mind, Fred. Don't bother. No, no, no. I want you to see what a prize boar looks like. <laughs> I've got a fairly good idea. It's got to be in here. Well, look, Fred, old man, let's just... Uh... Hey, Father, I... Oh, hello, Mr. Culver. Oh, hello there. I'm Betty, in case you've forgotten which one I am. Oh, sure, sure. I was just telling your father about a little trip we made. Oh, I'd love to hear all about it. Did you really go to the Corn Palace? Yes, sir, we sure did. The old Corn Palace. Oh, I'd just love to hear all about it. Uh, Betty... Go on, Mr. Culver. Well, sir, the day we arrived there, I counted 19 out-of-state licenses parked right there in that one place. Did you really? Yes, with Mrs. Culver's help, of course. Nineteen? What states were they? Betty. Well, there was Tennessee, <laughs> Idaho, Maine. Betty, I think your mother wants you out in the kitchen. Arkansas, Utah, Ohio. Uh, Betty. Just a minute, Father. I want to hear this. Kansas, New Hampshire, and you don't see many New Hampshires. Well, I bet not. Go on. Betty. Oregon, North Dakota, Pennsylvania, both South and North Carolina... Gee. How many's that? I didn't count them. Would you start over again? Betty. <laughs> yes, Father? I'm sure your mother wants you out in the kitchen. I didn't hear her. Say, Betty, do you know where my... Oh, uh, am I interrupting something? Oh, no, bud. Mr. Culver was just telling Father and me about his trip. I'll bet you'd like to hear about this, too. Oh, boy, would I? <laughs> Father, would you mind starting right in at the beginning so Bud won't miss a thing? Well, I'd be glad to, but maybe it'll bore Jim here. Oh, no. <laughs> the no. Well, interesting things bear repeating, I always say. Bud, we left here exactly two weeks ago, day before yesterday, and we motored to Mitchell, South Dakota. And there we took in the Corn Palace and averaged 22 and three-fourths miles per gallon. Now, what do you think of that? Holy cow. Bud. <laughs> well, what I did, Bud, was put down each gallon of gas I put into the car at the time it was put in. And the mileage, plus weather conditions. Wind makes a difference, you know. <laughs> I also indicated whether it was uh, generally uphill or downhill. Uh, excuse me a minute, Fred. Uh, Bud, don't you have to go out now and do your chores? I don't have any chores to do. You do now. <laughs> you uh, better run along But uh, I thought we were just gonna loll around the house Enjoying ourselves today Mr. Culver, tell Bud how many out-of-state licenses you saw Twenty-two and three-fourths uh, No, 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 no <laughs> What's the matter with me? Nineteen, nineteen What states were they? Bud Tennessee, Idaho, Maine, Arkansas Oh, me Oh, Jim, you'd better hurry and dress or we'll be late Huh? The children and I are all ready I would have called you sooner, but I didn't realize what time it was getting to be. We've missed part of the carnival as it is. Carnival? Mm-hmm. Are you people going to the carnival? Oh, yes. Whoa, wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> well, I guess I must have misunderstood. I, I thought you were going to be home all day. Well, you see, I... Uh, uh, he that was is, going uh... to be home. And then we remembered this was carnival day. And Jim had promised to take the children. Oh, sure, sure, I see. I'm sorry to have to break this up, Fred. Oh, that's all right, Jim. We can do it later. Okay, Fred. Yeah, I just hope that I haven't lost the snapshot of that prize boar. Oh, you'll find it. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming over, Fred. That's okay, Jim. Glad to do it for you. See you later. Fine, Fred. So long. Oh. Mrs. Anderson, may I shake your hand? and congratulate you on your new position as chief of the rescue squad. <laughs> well, thank you, dear. But you little traitors, egging him on like that. Who? Us? 
What states were they? What was your gas mileage? <laughs> oh, I lost count. Will you start over? <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was that anyway? Whose was it? Uh, well, we haven't time to discuss that now. If you don't hurry, we never will get to the carnival. And we are going, aren't we, Jim? Do you want to know something? If I don't get out of this house, I'll go crazy. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Gosh, that Fred Culver would make anyone a nervous wreck, wouldn't he? But he's not the only one. There's a certain other party that may be troubling you and your nerves. Tell us about him, Ed Prentice. Well, his name, friends, is Mr. Coffee Nerves. And he's the world's champion sleep thief and nerve upsetter, believe me. Maybe he's been bothering you, stealing your sleep, upsetting your nerves, all because you can't take the caffeine and coffee. Now, of course, not everyone is bothered by caffeine. Many aren't. But if you are, if you'd like to enjoy the deep down peace of a good night's sleep again, switch to instant postum. Postum, you know, is the delicious drink that contains no caffeine, no caffeine at all. So there's no chance for coffee nerves, no chance for sleepless nights due to the caffeine in coffee or tea. How about switching to instant postum tomorrow? <laughs> The schemes of mice and men have been known to fail, but not those employed by the Andersons to persuade father to take them to the annual Founders' Day carnival. And now the back seat of the Anderson sedan is filled with sleeping, pop-filled, cotton candy-covered children on its way back to the white frame house on Maple Street. Like this. <laughs> I was just thinking, Margaret, how those kids worked and schemed today to get me out of the house. <sighs> They were cute, weren't they? Do you have any idea who put them up to all that? Um, I don't think so. Well, I do. Hmm? I don't know if you noticed, but as we were leaving the carnival, I ran into Mrs. Fred Culver, and she asked me to thank you for calling Fred over and inviting him in to tell me about his trip. Uh-oh. Oh, traitor. It's a lucky thing that I happen to love you. On November 4th, the people who go to the polls and vote will be, with every ballot, helping to secure the future of America, helping to keep our freedom strong. Make sure you exercise your right and duty as a citizen next Tuesday. Get out and vote this election day. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling brand flakes, and Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine-free. In our cast were Mary Lee Robb as Betty, Dorothy Lovett, Ted Donaldson, Helen Strom, and Earl Ross. It comes in a red, white, and blue box. What is it? Hot Post Wheat Meal. It has the picture of Roy Rogers on the package. What is it? Hot Post Wheat Meal. It's packed full of whole wheat nourishment. What is it? Hot Post Wheat Meal. It has a rich, delicious, nut-like flavor. What is it? Hot Post Wheat Meal. Cooks in just three minutes. Another member of the famous Post family. What is it? Hot Post Wheat it's the best hot cereal you ever ate. Hot post wheat meal. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Carl Hertzinger. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Listen to West Coast College Football, Saturday on NBC.